music show, Trayvon Polly Z. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. Wanted to chat with you since I had Joey on quite a while back. I'm a lover of Z Rock and I'm a lover of ZO2, so I'm excited. I got an, an email with some music. You had as a, you had like a double album or an album EP yep. mixture with some new C. stuff, old to album? old new. Not album. Are you using the word album? Come on, you're, you're, you're aging yourself. <laughs> I'm making myself. I'm 53, and I buy albums still. And I don't even just collect them. I listen to them. I don't collect. So. Oh really? Oh, I was gonna say because no, no. a lot of people no, no. buy. I listen to them. Surgeons, no. but they buy it for collecting with the motivation to start up again. And it's really the credit goes to Mark Mendoza from Twisted Sister because he had offered. He, he's been uh, basically he was a, uh, always a, a friend and a colleague. At, you know, we've played Zio two played with Twisted Sister a lot back in the day. Yeah. Um, but when I've done the. Uh, when I've done various fundraising events for the for the, my foundation, which is the David Z Foundation now, um, it was something else prior uh, back in the day. But you know, Mark has always been supportive and always contributing something, whatever. And then one day he just told me, he "Goes, you know, I love helping you out and the stuff you do, and whatever. Uh, but if you, you know, if you and Joey ever decided to do a show, a ZO2 show, even if one off, like to raise money, whatever, it was, I would love to play with you guys, and uh, I, I would, you know." do the show it'd be an honor i was like what and you know this is like a legit rock star that you know we look up to and he's he's saying yeah i'll play your songs with you if you want so it it i just it was not something i think joey i ever thought we would do again and just the idea i said well let me think about it let me percolate and the idea of doing it for for charity mm-hmm. and the idea that it was with someone like mark who was a you know, again, it was like it wasn't like a replacement in any way. It was like it was a, a, a unique novelty thing where he was this giant rock star, kind yeah. of like, you know, helping out of two two knuckleheads from Brooklyn. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so I thought, okay, that could be cool because there's no there's not going to be any weird like comparisons or anything. So we did it for my birthday, which was the week like uh, a week before the pandemic hit. Um, so it was the last great uh, show prior to the pandemic. <laughs> Um, we did it, and it was, and it was, you know, for me, it was emotional. I think people saw on my face that night, like I was, I wasn't able to enjoy it as much as I would have liked to, right. because it was, you know, it was hard. It was, it was cool in one sense that we were doing it, and then it was like looking over, and I'm not seeing my brother. So, yeah. Um, and, and for those that may not know, you know, I'm kind of jumped into. But my brother was the bass, original bass player, singer in Zio Two with Joey and I, and was killed in 2017, and. Um, and we had we had sort of I don't want to say broken up because we didn't really break up. It was more of like a indefinite hiatus while we did other things. And then we said maybe we'll come back later. And um, we were planning on coming back. A lot of people don't know this. We actually behind the scenes had yeah nobody knows this, but now I can tell. But right that same year, and I'll tell you why because my 40th birthday party was uh, that March of 2017. He was killed in July, mm-hmm. right? So it took four months. And for my birthday party, I had all the bands I was ever in play in one night. It was a private show at Arlene's Grocery in New York. So all of my very first band, my solo band, all my bands. It was amazing. Wow. Yeah, it was so cool. And uh, uh, ZO2 played, obviously. And it was awesome. Like, it, it was great. People loved it. We loved it. And because of that, we said, should we do this again? Because now at that point, enough time had passed that, like, everyone was, like, doing their own thing and you know like we, we had a, a enough yeah. got stuff out of our system um and so yeah we said let's do this and we actually had a gig in new york book the following year we had a we would write we had a whole plan it was oh. it was crazy and then yeah and then it all changed so i think the idea of just doing something like that for one time or a few times as a novelty was cool but when we did it it just it, it felt right. It was great. And people loved it. And we felt good. And um, yeah, that's kind of what started it, you know. I think it, I, I was thinking, I'm sure we brought I'd want to bring it up. I mean, obviously, it's part of the story, but it, I mean, you're in a spot where everyone's going to be like looking at you because of the move, how, how you're going to react, how you, like, you're, you know, you're in a weird spot because of what happened to move forward. I think it's great. I don't think there's, I think it's, I think it was needed. I think your music's awesome. I don't think like I, I, I was listening, you know, I listened to it I, I, and, and um, I don't even know how, where, like where to place it. Like if you like this artist, like, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you, you cover so many different things. Like, Which is a plus like, and a minus. It's a, it's a pro exactly. and a con in a way. Because in commercially speaking, that hurt, hindered us, I think, 
Because if you want commercial success, you almost need to fit into a little bit of a box. Yeah. You need to almost be like, oh, that's uh, that sound, that's like this band. Or that sounds like this, because then you're like, you get put onto a track, uh, not a track, an audio track, but like, you know, right. like you put, put onto like, okay, we're in this station, we're in that category. When you're more uh, unique in that sense, the way I think of the way we were, which is like, basically, like you say, it's like, it gets a lot of influences. Yeah. It makes it more difficult to do that, you know? But it's very, musically speaking, if you're a music fan, I think, uh, you know, then it becomes very rewarding because it's fresh. It's like, oh, this doesn't sound like this band or that band. So there's always that give and take. And every song sounds totally different. I mean, like, yeah, I was thinking like, you can be like, if you like extreme, but then if you also like funk music, if you like, like so many different types of music, like I hear yeah. like, there's so there's right grunge in there. Like, I mean, there's like, yeah. there's grunge. Yeah. I mean, there's Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, there's Big Aerosmith, Zeppelin. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, yeah Zeppelin, like, Be so, Beatles. Like, yeah. Right, so, I mean, you can hear all these different influences. I'm like, I wouldn't even know where to go with that. Like, I think the best thing is now, I mean, it's like any big shows, and we can see you, you know, festivals, anything where there's a lot of people, there's a lot of different music, where people can absorb you because their minds are open for a lot of music. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I love the fact that um, on, on this um, album, the digital release I received. I love All Hell's Breaking Loose. I love that you guys did that. I yeah, well, so what, older. Well, that, yeah, well, and that's the thing. A lot of, uh, hopefully we're clearing it up. We're trying to be as clear as possible online, but, you know, sometimes it's hard to make, you know, to, to for people not to go get the wrong impression. But I think some people thought it was like a brand, you know, like all new songs, like a double disc right. of new songs. And it's so, you know, just to be clear, it's an anthology of our career of our past and and where we're going to go so it starts off with the new song begin again which technically is not even a brand new song that one and live today which are the new songs were songs we had towards the end before we uh went our separate ways and um were brought back to life live today is actually a song i put out on my solo ep after i, I moved to la and this was the zo2 version so we said oh let's put that out no one's ever heard it and begin again was written actually about when I, uh, my divorce, when I got divorced, it was about re and I moved to LA. Like I had a whole kind yeah. of rock bottom thing in my life. And then I had to start again. And then it's just sat on the shelf, you know? Uh, um, and then when we decided to do this, I, I asked Joey, I said, well, I think this is the perfect song to release because it's exactly where we're at, but I need to rewrite it. So I rewrote it about David, about losing David. Cause obviously as you know, you gotta take out the references yeah. of like a, an, a love interest. And uh, yeah, and it just, it just works and 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 it's exactly where we're at and so i think it's a great way to start the record and sean's bass playing it's just he fits in so perfectly but the, the other stuff the idea was the first cd for those that don't know is like the the retrospective of our three full length albums let's just call it albums i like that word more than i think it's pretty good yeah yeah i mean it's not technically an album but but the collection it's a collection, of, it's a collection yeah. yeah yeah and then the second one are like all the stuff that was those are the extras. So there were singles that we released, like That's What's Up and Heart of Confusion. They were, they're on iTunes, but there was no physical copy. So if you're a fan, right, and we're all influenced by Kiss, you know, if you have that mentality, you want the physical. Even if you don't play it, you just right. kind of want that physical. Uh, we had the Z-Rock theme song, uh, which was never released. And All Hell's Breaking Loose was on the Eric Carr tribute CD. But again, we never released it. So. We were like, let's just put everything. And then there's a live track of us with Sean doing his easy top cover. It was just like, let's just take everything and put it on one disc so that at least now for people that are ZO2 fans, they have something that is like for them is a collectible, let's say, right? Even if they have the other CDs, but this is gonna like add to the collection. And for new people, it's a really cool way to introduce them. You know what I mean? That, that was our thought yeah. process, kind of like our uh, you know, history. It, it it's 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 pretty good though. I mean, it's pretty well balanced going through it. Yeah, uh, all of was I was not familiar with. I, th I thought you guys had done it, but I hadn't heard it. So when that popped in, See? there you go. I know, and yeah. I like this. And, and it's I so like funny too because the Brooklyn, Excited. my Brooklyn oh. came out was yeah. perfect. It's the yeah. one song where I don't have to try to hide my accent. I always when I sing, I have to be careful on certain words that my New York, my New York doesn't come out. And on that song, it was the opposite. It was like I I turned it up. You know, street hustler. <laughs> it's so good, and it's so good. It's like it's tongue in cheek, like it it it, it honors it, but it has fun because it's, it's, it's the way Paul does it. Anyhow, it's funny. 
But when I heard the, the yeah. music on, I'm like, oh my god! I go, I go how's Paul going to do this? Like, what's he going to do? Like the vocals, and I heard, it, I was like, oh, this is spot on. It was so good. <laughs> I had to play it twice because I was like, that's so good. It fits perfect. Yeah, yeah. It. No, it, yeah, I it was. We're, I we're very that. proud of how it came out. But yeah, I mean, I try to match, like you said, it's it kind of like not tongue in cheek in the sense that I'm poking fun. Obviously, if it's like we're no. Kiss fanatics, but tongue in cheek in the sense that we realize it's kind of goofy. And it doesn't matter, you know. Even when I was in a yeah. Kiss tribute band, well, that's how I met Joey. And when I would do all the Paul moves, like you could see me cracking up as I'm doing yeah. it. I'm like, this is ridiculous, but awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, you know? it's just like when Joey does his wrestling. It's ridiculous. Oh, well, it's awesome. I think that's just. Uh, <laughs> I'm I, trying to do Joey's side. I, can, I, I would say I agree with the first half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to be diplomatic about it. I'm not a wrestling fan. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, uh, you you should be. I don't have to be. <laughs> no, no. I I think <laughs> I I think it's the same thing. I think it's like you, you know, it, it 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 it's awesome in its purity and fun. and right. And, right, and also you know he loves it. Like whether you like wrestling or not, like you know, if it's not your cup of tea, like Kiss. I always tell us like whether you like Kiss or not, you can't deny their passion and their dedication no. to what they do and their craft. So for me, Paul. You know, again, maybe when I was a kid, I probably thought everything he did was so cool. And it was like, oh, my God. And, you know, and then I realized it's a, it's mostly che pretty cheesy, <laughs> most of it. But it doesn't matter because he does it even to this day, to the last show I saw. Like, he does yeah. it fully, you know, with 100 percent of his heart and soul. And he means it, you know, that's and that is the takeaway for me. Like, I, you know, cheesy is a, you know, stupid or cheesy or whatever whatever anybody wants to think about anything, that's an opinion. That's the great thing about art. Everyone can have an opinion. But what to me, what makes great art is the authenticity of it. If that's 100% your heart and soul into it, no one can deny that. They can say, I don't like it. They can say, that looks, right. you know, that's, that's crappy music, whatever. That's your opinion. It's not fact, though. It's, it's fun, is what it is. It's because of being fun. They don't take themselves too seriously. You know, right? I don't think so. And that's that's what if he, I think if they took themselves too serious, then then it wouldn't be. No, it wouldn't work. No. Yeah, I mean, Alice Cooper is the yeah. same way. I mean, Alice Cooper. I mean, yeah. it's pretty dark, right? And pretty like, but you know, it's tongue in cheek, and that's what makes it fun. You know, when yeah. right? If they if Kiss was, if Kiss was trying to be like super, you know, serious about everything they did. I mean, they're yeah. serious about the business side of it. They they put their heart and soul, but and, and the yeah, music, trying, and the music, yeah. but everything else, kind of, yeah. Well, even that. in the music, though, I mean, even in the music, I mean, let's put the X in sex and you pull the trigger on my love gun. There is a sense of like, you know, we're uh, all night. I didn't I say mean, the lyrics. I meant the professionalism <laughs> and putting the quality and trying to, trying to figure out the best product. I'm not talking lyrics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would but never that say goes that back lyrics. to what I was saying as far as them putting their heart and soul. Right. It's like what we try to do, too. Like even when we like like Z-Rock, you know, the, the TV show we had, like, you know, we're goofy guys, right? We're tongue in cheek. We're goofy guys, but anything and everything we do, even if I do a kids album for toddlers, you know, or I'm doing, you know, we're editing videos for for elementary school kids in my foundation. Like anything and everything we do, we do a hundred percent, and that to me is the difference. That's a mentality. If it's tongue in cheek, that's irrelevant. That's just that's just the approach, you know, the style. But it's the you can see if someone is a hundred percent in it or not. Authentic. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Did that you? Authenticity is everything. Did you, any of us act like acting before you guys did the Xerox? Nope. Seriously, because you guys all, like, it's so good. Like, people that haven't seen it, go, go look up Xerox. It's two seasons. It's hilarious. Like, I can't believe how funny it is. And each episode would get funnier and funnier. D. Snyder, Daryl Hall. Like, it, just, it was just like yeah. the best show ever. John Rivers. Rivers. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, it was, imagine, yeah, imagine. that's right. Oh, every episode is laughing Here harder and now, harder. Yeah. No, yeah. no, we, but I think the reason it worked, this is, and I think Joey will agree. I think the reason it worked, even though we were not trained actors at all, at, like at all, like I don't even taken one acting class. The reason it worked is because we were playing ourselves. So technically we weren't acting in that sense. We were reacting, if that makes right. sense. Um, and you know, there were scenes that we did have to act. I remember a scene I had to cry with Dawn Marie and I had to learn how to cry. But, um, but the other thing is we were together. So I think that's really what helped because we had a chemistry that was natural and our normal chemistry in real life all we had to do is recreate that in front of a camera. So we had each other, if that made sense, you know? Right. I, I think because, you know, when people get in front of a camera, though, they freeze. You guys probably had more of a stage presence, more of a performance. Right. So yeah, yeah. you guys don't have the anxiety because like a normal person, I 
done video production and you get put somebody to do an interview and also they tell about everything, you just point yeah. the camera at them and they're frozen. Yeah, you know I mean? that's true. But that's why I'm saying like, for you guys, just get in front of the camera and just be like, da, 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 and you're riffing and you've never had experience. Yeah, no, so we were talking. We're very like, yeah, because you're, you, you're right too, because I, I, I tend to forget too, like in a band, so usually the singer is comfortable, right? But then, you know, then you get the drummer or the bass player and they and the interview and they're, they're the ones that are awkward or they don't feel very comfortable talking because that's not what they do usually. In our band, all three of us were hams. I mean, we were all, <laughs> we were all loved it. We actually had a fight for camera time. We would try to outdo each other, be the funniest. I think I won. I believe, I think it's pretty obvious I was the funniest. But, um, but you know what I mean? Like we would <laughs> <laughs> no, that I never said. I'll never say that. You'll never hear me say that. Um, but actually, it was a running joke that David, it's funny, David always got upset because we would say that he, that Joey and I think it was the strongest when it came to the comedy and acting. I mean, and he knew it, so yeah. it's like, it's okay. And we always joked about it because his lines would get cut. <laughs> and he would have a joke or whatever. And they always cut, he goes, why do they always cut my, my jokes? And Joey and I would say, because they're not funny. <laughs> <laughs> he was so he was so pissed, and then it was like it's like they just uh, want me to take my clothes off. That's all. I'm like, yeah, well, you're the, listen, you're the sex symbol, you're the Greek god. Leave the comedy and acting to Joey and I. You know, you just you just get naked. <laughs> so what a great show. I, anyway, thank you. Uh, yeah, I encourage you to check it out. Um, but so where are we going to go with now from this? Is it going to be touring or like how's it going to you move forward with this? The band. Uh, well, I, I, I think we all agreed. Um, well, Joey and I agreed before we actually invited Sean to come in. And by the way, just uh, if it's because some people may be wondering, because I've been asked, to, like, why, what, why Sean, right? How did we decide on Sean? Um, well, you know, because once we did the thing with Mark uh, and we started saying this, may, do we want to keep doing this? And then I had another big benefit that I did, a big, big benefit for the foundation with Stone Temple Pilots playing, and I wanted ZO2 to play. But the one thing I found it was very challenging was, you know, Joey and Mark live in New York and I live in LA and right. Joey knows this stuff. So I don't have to worry about him. He knows it, right? He and I, it's in yeah. our blood, but whoever's going to come in on bass, this, it, it, not, the songs seem easy, but they're a lot more complicated than people think. They're very subtle, but you go in, there's a lot of mm -hmm. things that are musically pretty challenging. Plus as a vocal, as David sang and when our harmonies were a big part of that sound. So yeah. I really felt it was important to have someone in LA that I can get together with and really put in that time, the work, because otherwise it won't be it won't be great. And then someone who can sing too, you know, Mark doesn't sing and he lives in LA, uh, New York. So it's like, that's not gonna work really. And Sean was someone I had worked with out here many, many times. And he was, he's just, he's amazing. Um, and he's a good guy. That's the other thing. Yeah. He's a good guy and he's an actor. He was on Sons of Anarchy and he's his, his uh, um, you know, his, uh, independent film just uh, won a whole bunch of awards. So, you know, he has everything he needs to kind of fit in. And yeah. um, he spent, I mean, we spent hours working on the material and him asking me, okay, is this the right harmony? Is this how I have to play the bass? And he was very respectful of, and, and, and took the job, the position very gracefully. And I think that's the key. The reason the chemistry is there now is the hours that Sean and I have been spending at his house or my house, really mm -hmm. nailing the material. So to answer your question, what goes on from here, you know, we said, why don't we just do shows that are fun? You know, unless it's a great financially, you know, great paying show, we'll, we'll do that, obviously. But if other than that, we're not going to go jump in a van and go on tour and start doing that again. You know, uh, we have kids and families and other things. So we just decided, let's just play some cool shows. Let's put this thing out, see if there's any interest even, at least get that song out, at least get the band back and up and running. And then kind of see, go from there. Definitely not gonna to be touring or anything like that. Um, if the song became a hit single tomorrow, let's just say, you know, fantasy land all of a sudden, I still don't think we would do it, you know what I mean? Cause you know, I have a two month old newborn baby. Like I don't wanna be away from home more than a weekend at a time. So I think we would just wanna cherry pick really cool opportunities, cool shows, maybe opening for uh, other bigger bands or doing festivals, but definitely new music. That I can say for sure, we're excited about writing with Sean and writing new music and at least releasing him, you know, and then, you know, we'll play whatever shows make sense. But that's fair. I, I, actually, the first thing I wanna say is, 
when I saw Sean, it, I, I followed him for the years musically and all he's done. So to me, I was like, oh, that makes sense. I didn't even think about that. Like to me, knowing, you know, following him musically and, you know, I know of him totally makes sense that he's part of the band, you know? Yeah. Um, but thank some you for sharing that. I'm sure a lot of people man. don't. So, some, yeah. Some big well, shoes to fill, you know? Well, musically, yeah, he 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 needs to compliment you is when you do. You, I always say you can't ever replace anybody in any band. You you can you know compliment that person. You know what I mean? Yeah. You never can replace a single person. So no, I mean AC, look at even AC, AC, but look at ACDC is to me is like the perfect example of that, right? Yeah. Because like Zeppelin stopped when Bonham would die. He, they stopped and then they kind of like did some one offs. But ACDC actually continued with the new singer and the singer, which is like. The hardest yeah. person to replace, you know, arguably is the most difficult person to replace. And, you know, and they got bigger. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But yet, but yet there's that still that respect and homage to Bon Scott in those years. And it's a different vibe, a different band. But the brand and the band continued. And I think in no way does anyone, even if though the sound is kind of similar, nobody ever like says that Brian Johnson replaced Bon Scott. Like they're like yeah. two different people, but they filled the same role. And I think that's kind of the way I look at it. You know what I mean? That's the way I look at things. And I, to me, that's why I see things because I'm like, you just can't replace somebody. You just can't. No. That's, that's, no. Why would you? They're, they're special. That's just, I mean, read. So, yes, Sean's awesome for this. Now you got to find time with Joey and all his touring and your touring and to do a. Well, you write all the songs anyhow. So then it'd be just you getting together and recording it or. Yeah, I mean, David, well, David and I, that's the thing. David wrote half the stuff. So a, a lot of the more, I'd say, musically challenging. Anything that was a little bit more like musically challenging or, or or unique or eclectic tended to come from him, and anything that was more pop came from him, which was interesting. He had, and I was really? kind of in between. Yeah, like yeah, like songs that were like paper braids, something that sounded like poppy. He loved pop music. I didn't. So anything that was like straight ahead pop, kind of like feel good, was him. And anything that was like intricate musically speaking was him. And then I was like, I'm a blues soul, you know, kind of guy. So anything that had that kind of swagger or that bluesy, uh, you know what I mean? And that right. that was me. So there was an interesting combination because he was the songs were poppy yeah. and they were musically challenging and interesting, but yet they were soulful. So plus um, and then and make an arena rock on top of that. Every now and then the yeah, chorus looking exactly. ginormous. And then yeah. a pretty little song so, again. I, I think I would, you know, interesting. I didn't even think about this now as we're talking, but I think I would probably, because I can do all those musical chops that he had too. I just didn't think of those terms necessarily when writing, but I think I would probably incorporate some of that to keep the, the consistency in the music, knowing that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and like I would try to like be like, you know, we need some songs that have some really kind of cool rush like licks or something like that, just because we're, that's part of the brand. You know, I wouldn't want to lose that. One of the things that people find you kind of special about it, um, as we get near the end of this interview, I, I want to keep it tight. I, I, I want to say you are, you guys almost became not we get too big. Everything's changed on you guys, and the market's kind of weird. Music's changed. Definitely a cult band, which is kind of cool. So you got your yeah. own like, little spot. How are people reacting now that they're like, oh, you're back? Are you getting a lot of well, excited feedback or what? Yeah, tons. But I mean, from from our limited pool of loyal fans like that's the thing about being a cult anything right like even rocky horror picture show right it's like a, i wasn't like a big blockbuster hit movie but it's like a classic cult movie that people it's a slow you know, burn yeah. yeah yeah and that right it is and it over the time more and more people get to know it. and anything that's like i mean there's so many bands that are like that too that have that cult following um you know we got compared a lot i didn't know who they were at the time but i see the comparison to king's x and we kept getting compared to them a lot as a power trio. Everybody I was thinking that the other day. Yeah, well, because musically they're also they're all kind of all over the map, and it's as the a harmonies music. and everything. Yeah, yeah, and I love it. But you know, they're also I feel like they're kind of like they have a loyal cult following. There's again pros and cons. The the, the con is you don't get to the level where the income is there and the the luxury of like playing the bigger, better venues or getting the pub the the you know, the airplay that you would want. So, you know, you don't, you, you don't quite get that, but the benefit is you get the loyalty that you, that a band that has a hit song doesn't necessarily earn 
you know? Right. And you get the longevity because I think bands like that, like a band like ZO2, I think if we play the right size venues, right? If we're not like going in and trying to fill Madison Square Garden, but if we're playing like venues that are right for us, like we could pretty much do that for the rest of our lives and even build it little by little because it's a consistent and true f- fan following. Whereas yeah. a band that maybe has a hit song, right? And now they're playing Madison Square Garden, but the next album, not so great, whatever, people forget and that's it. And now they're gone and they break up. So that's kind of the pros and cons. I think I'm very, very grateful and happy to be in that category of, you know, call. And we got a little taste of fame with the TV show. So that's cool. We got to taste it a little bit and it, you know, and it didn't well, really. Know, to be a cult band, you had to have some fame. You know, you got, you, you got a total musical credit creds with everybody you know you know your credentials are yeah. with your peers and your fans are, are really up there um i want to thank you for this little a brief interview today I, I want to catch you down down the road when you have more time we'll talk yeah. um but but this is this has been fantastic i want people to check out the anthology album that's not an album that's just digital <laughs> yeah that's just call it let's call it an album i think it's an album i call everything an album yeah but i want to thank well, you yeah i mean i guess you don't want to guess and no one's ever corrected me and said it's not really an album because well, so. No, well, because you know what it is, because I keep thinking when I tell you album to like, you know, I work with kids, a lot of kids, and they don't even know what to meet with the album. <laughs> like, they don't even know what a CD at this point anymore. I got to say like the, the MP3 track, but an album actually doesn't have to be the physical. I keep, I got to remind myself like an album could still be kind of like, a, like a, almost like yeah. a photo album or something. It's just a collection of some A lot of us grow up like, think it's a collection a of songs. <laughs> right, you know, not like instead of like a record or uh, right. an LP or something, whatever. The album's just a collection of yeah. songs now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my tune. That's it. I'm gonna start using album again. Uh, I don't I'm even like saying, the words. I think, I think it was an album. It's regardless, it's, it's awesome. It's great. I want people to check it out. Go back if you haven't seen Z Rock. Check it out if you've seen it. Go check it out again. It's hilarious. Watch these guys. Um, thanks, man. I want to thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thank you very much for having me.